Death Stranding is a mechanically complex game. There's plenty that you need to contend with. A lot of those may seem unusual. So to make your first steps a little easier to get used to, I've made a few lists of tips and tricks, so without further ado, let's go for an adventure. The first tip is stay online. The social strength system is something Kojima was talking non-stop in months before the Death Stranding launched. Whether it's true or not regarding this so-called genre, no doubt that this is an important part of the gameplay loop. Special points here that you can and need to use those mechanics that were the main idea of the gameplay. If you play the game offline, it will be a lot harder. Trips will be longer and getting past simple object and challenges might take a lot more time. So make sure to be always online because making use of structures left behind by other players will be very helpful. Keep contributing resources. As Death Stranding's story progresses onward, more structures to introduce to make it easier for you. But as more complicated and elaborate they get, the more resources they require. Building the bridge isn't as simple as plunking the ladder down. Building highways and road is way harder. These structures require a lot of resources which you can find in the open world or withdraw with the terminals. They may appear as completely built, but once they finish, they make the journey across previous location much, much easier. Plan your way. Planning your journey is a key in this game, and the game gives you a lot of tools and equipment to do that properly. When you're about to start your trip, pinning a mark on your map isn't enough. Use the 3D map, hold down the touchpad and tilt the controller. To study the terrain, later on in the game you will be able to see the weather forecast, so keep it in mind. To make sure to avoid the area with the time fall and potential BT encounters whenever possible. With all that, place many custom markers and as much as possible to stick to your plan. Time Fall Shelter Game Supernatural Time Disorting Rainfall or Time Fall. This is something you want to avoid at all costs as soon as possible. Not only does it damage your cargo, it also brings the BTs. If you find yourself in the area with a Time Fall, make sure you build a Time Shelter using your PCC which you will get the ability to build in a few hours into the game, or to use the shelter built by another player. Not only do those shelters recharge your batteries and repair your equipment, you can also skip time here in parts of 10 minutes or more until the rain stops and it's safe for you to move on. Take it slow with BTs. Those things are by far the biggest threat in the Death Stranding and they're pretty scary but once you got the strategy of how to deal with them, getting through BT's area can be very easy and thing you will need the most is simply patience. Make sure to always crouch when the BT is around and to scan the environment. Look where BT is in your vicinity and slow move around them. Keep in mind to look at Sam audio deck. It changes the color of its light and spinning like crazy when you are close to BT's. As soon as it does that, stop and scan the area again. How to escape BT If you get caught by BT doesn't automatically mean that the game is over. You get a small window of opportunity to escape before they pull you to another side for a boss fight against the catcher. It all depends how badly you messed up. The area around will be covered in black mud. All you need to do is to get to the edge of this area. Occasionally BT will try to pull you back in the mud, so when it happens, you just smash square to break free of their grab. It can be a bit tricky since you have to keep your balance while doing that, so keep that in mind too. Hold R2 L2 always. Balance is an important mechanic in Death Stranding. Sam balance depending on how much cargo he carries, how he is carrying it and what kind of terrain he's traversing. When as more as you are leaning towards one side, the game will prompt you to push the opposite trigger to keep the balance and not damaging his cargo. But there is something that you can and should do that will make your life easier. To hold L2 and R2 constantly. It's easier than survey your terrain constantly and it means you won't have to constantly push L2 or R2 to keep your balance. Use Exosuit. 
Of many tools, Death Stranding hands to make the traversal easier exosuit are among the most useful. As the game progresses, you acquire new kinds of exosuits that will give you new benefits. And they really do make difference. Power suit is increasing your maximum carrying capacity and also reduces the impact your cargo has on your speed and balance. The speed suit speeds you up and it's great for a long distance path, especially across the flat surface. Though terrain can have your balance and speed, so anytime you're on the mountain, make sure you've got an all-terrain suit equipped. Arranging cargo. How Sam carries his cargo, where he places the object and how much this object weighs are all variables and define your balance. The game lets you micromanage those stuff, but again, there's a lot more easier method that you are highly recommended to do. As soon as you take the cargo and all the equipment that you need for the trip, click the triangle to auto-arrange it. The game will give you the most optimal solution to save time and it's really effective. Don't carry a lot of weapon. Death Stranding is really not a combative game. Still, sometimes you can get into plenty of combat situations. So you got plenty of weapon in the game and you wouldn't recommend it carrying them all with you at the same time. They add weight to your cargo and the weight can be more occupied by so much useful things like lost cargo deliveries or resources you might find in the open world. Against human enemies, you got the rope that you always carry with you. It is very useful tool for most of the time, especially if you're playing stealthy. And if you fight catchers, you can always use your hematric grenade that do a lot a lot more damage and weight a lot less when you install more grenade pouches on your backpack. During those bosses you can also ask for help from other players, which essentially means you got limited supply of weapons, so there is really not much point in having too much weapons with you. Lost Cargo While you're traveling in the huge world of Death Stranding game, you will often come across by lost cargo that left behind by other players. It might be tempting to leave them behind not to add more weight to your cargo, however, it could be very good idea to take them with you while you can. You don't have to deliver them, you can deliver them to the post box that is built by yourself or by other players. Don't get attached to the vehicles. A few hours into the game you will get access to the vehicles from bikes to big truck and as you know they're big health. They make long journeys quicker and they can be used to store more cargo along with you, allowing you to take more stuff with you to the journey. Keep in mind that vehicles can be with you temporarily only because of the constantly rough and changing terrain of the world and other threats like BTs for example. You will often be forced to leave your vehicle behind and continue onward on foot. Vehicles pretty disposable too, so don't try to hang on to them for a long time. You will get a lot of chances to get more, like to find vehicles left behind by other players. Memory chips. Some items so called memory chips sometimes they contain little easter eggs, while other times they contain important and fascinating bits of lore or backstory. Keep an eye on those. Often they have really interesting things to say. A lot of time you can find these in BT infested areas, so your natural interest can be to ignore them and get the hell out of there, but I would still recommend to keep an eye out. Read all the interviews. Death Stranding is all about the story and it has a lot of things to say. This game does it in a much more direct and interesting manner than the previous Kojima projects. Still, there is a lot more of important and interesting information tucked away in the interviews that can be found in the game's menu. They often contain vital bits of lore and backstory that they add a lot to the game. To get the most out of this game narrative then, make sure you are reading all the interviews. Thank you a lot for watching, hope this guide will be helpful for you and you enjoy the game as much as I do. Peace out.